Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When Francis stood in the street amongst onlookers and stripped himself of his clothes, when he threw off the clothes of the world, he was throwing off the yoke of this world. As he stood there only in his hair shirt, which he wore for penance, proclaiming God as his father, his earthly father, a wealthy merchant, who wanted him to become a man of prominence, watched. In a prophetic gesture, the bishop covered Francis in his own mantle. This mantle, one could say, symbolized the yoke he had taken up, the yoke of Christ. The yoke of Christ. We've heard this before, as we heard it in today's Gospel. Christ is telling us, Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy. But what is a yoke? How many of us have ever seen one? To the right of me, in front of the side altar here, is a real yoke. And though very small, it's an actual yoke. Made for two beasts of burden to pull something together. You'll notice a larger piece of wood up at the top and two hoops of thinner wood. The larger piece sits on the shoulders of the animals. Their heads go into the two hoops and they work together. They pull together. This is what Francis wanted more than the clothes on his back, more than his father's money or prestige or victories in a battle. He wanted to work together with Christ, to be yoked with him, to pull the load, to carry the cross. It was with tear-filled eyes in that little church of San Damiano when he heard the words with his own ears come from the lips of the crucified Christ. Francis, go, go. And again in the church of St. Nicholas, now with his first follower, Bernard, when they opened the Bible three times at random, they received the mission of the order. Words again of motion, of movement, from the lips of the crucified. Take nothing for the journey. Take up your cross. Follow me. Francis then took a piece of chalk and upon the only thing he would ever own, his tunic, he traced the symbol of the yoke which he had chosen, the symbol of the cross. You see, because the cross is the yoke of Christ, it looks like one, it behaves like one. The cross was laid across the back of Christ, and with the weight of that wood, he towed our entire salvation up that hill. He pulled against the weight of every sin ever committed and ever will be committed. He carried all our sins on his back. But the yoke, as we've seen, has two hoops. Two were meant to carry the load. Two hoops for two people. One for Christ and one for me. I am to carry the weight of that wood with him. I am to carry souls with Christ. St. Simon of Cyrene, then, is the image of the soul yoked to Christ. We saw this beautifully portrayed in the movie The Passion. When the wood of the cross was laid across both the back of St. Simon and the back of our Lord, the camera flashes to an aerial view of the top of the cross where we see the arm of St. Simon cross over the arm of Christ as they both hold the back of the cross. 
It's no accident that is precisely what appears on the Franciscan coat of arms, the arm of Christ and the arm of St. Francis, crossed over in unison, both working, both pulling the load, both with the weight of the cross on their backs. That coat of arms will be processed tonight after Mass. Take a close look. You'll see that both hands are pierced. That's because Francis became like what he loved, the crucified. This, this is the image of total conformity. Those who choose the yoke of Christ, those who choose the cross, choose to be conformed to Christ and begin to resemble him. Two animals cannot be yoked together without being in conformity with each other. It simply will not work. The stronger one will maintain course, while the weaker one will pull in the opposite direction, only to meet with a much more painful force, the pressure of the thin bar around the neck. Christ is only going in one direction. That is the road that leads to heaven. And so to reject conformity, to try to take another road, is to strangle oneself in sin. There is only one way forward, and that as the saying goes, to lean into your cross. The most conformable way is to lean your, your back into the cross that God has given you and toe the line with Christ, to continue to press forward with Christ, not fighting the cross. This is because the cross that God has given you in life is perfectly conformed to you. God has handpicked your cross as the way he has chosen to be yoked to you. The way the back of the yoke is shaped is designed perfectly to fit your shoulders. No other cross in life, carried by no other person, can be or ever will be better than the cross God has given you. It is a gift from the heart of God to you before the world began. It was designed for you. As scripture says, before the world was made, I knew you. Before the world was made, he designed your cross for you as well. And it is only this one that will lead you to heaven. Francis chose the yoke of Christ the one that God gave him. He wanted no other. He left his old life on the street that day when he laid his clothing at his father's feet. And all of hell was furious at him for it. They often came to trouble him, to bring him again under that yoke of that world that he had cast aside. They brought to mind all that they could to pull him away the delightful evenings he had in his youth, his dreams of earthly glory. And when that didn't work, they threatened him. Hell tried to stop what we know would be the case eight centuries later. The countless souls that were to be saved by this man, who had such a close union with the Savior. But the assaults of the enemy were unsuccessful. No, the arms of St. Francis remain as they appear on the coat of arms, firmly interlocked with those of Christ, embracing what was for him, the standard for everything. He wore the standard of the cross on his garments. He painted it on the walls of all the places he stayed. Instead of his own name, he utilized it as his only signature for every letter he signed. To this day, when we pray the Stations of the Cross and we genuflect, it's the words of St. Francis that we speak when we say, we adore you, O Christ, and we bless you, for by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. He lived the life of one yoke to Christ. 
he lived the words of the apostle, I will not glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Francis understood that suffering with Christ was the path to perfect joy. One winter day, when he was walking to St. Mary of the Angels with Brother Leo in the bitter cold, which made them suffer greatly, St. Francis called to Brother Leo, asking him to write and said, Even if one of our brothers gives sight to the blind, heals the paralyzed, drives out devils, gives hearing back to the deaf, and makes the lame walk, write, that perfect joy is not in that. And going on a bit, Francis cried out again in a strong voice, Brother Leo, if a friar knew all the languages and sciences, and if he also knew how to prophesy and to reveal not only the future, but also see the secrets of the consciences and minds of others, write down and note carefully that perfect joy is not in that. Brother Leo, in great amazement, finally asked, Father, I beg you in God's name, what is perfect joy? And Francis replied, When we come to St. Mary of the Angels, soaked by the rain and frozen by the cold, all soiled with mud and suffering from hunger, and we ring at the gate, and the porter comes and says angrily, Who are you? And we say, We are two of your brothers. And he contradicts us and says, You are not telling the truth. You are two rascals who deceive people and steal from the poor. Go away. O oh, brother Leo, write, That is perfect joy. And if we endure all his insults and injuries with patience, O oh, brother Leo, Right, that is perfect joy. And now hear the conclusion, Brother Leo. Above all the graces and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which Christ gives to his friends, is that of conquering oneself and willingly enduring sufferings, insults, humiliations, and hardships for the love of Christ. For we cannot glory and all those other marvelous gifts of God, as they are not ours, but God's. As the Apostle says, What have you that you have not received? What do you possess that you have not received? But if you have received it, why are you boasting as if you did not receive it? But we can glory in the cross of tribulations and afflictions, because that is ours. And so the Apostle says, I will not glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now most of us would see these things as horrible, to be in the cold, to be rejected by your own. But this is perfect joy to St. Francis. This is the perfect joy of the saints. And in perfect joy, everything is easy. Even the most difficult things become easy because they unite us to our Lord and their end is heaven. St. Bernard explains, he went and labored assiduously and more than any of the others. His obedience quieted his mind. For a man is never more satisfied with himself and when he obeys. Experience shows that the yoke of obedience is light and that self-will is oppressive. When Christ said in today's gospel, my yoke is easy, he didn't decide at that moment to use the heavenly met metaphor. Christ did not say in that moment, oh, I know what I will do. I will compare my cross with a yoke. No, the yoke was designed in the mind of God before all time to be that symbol. Christ is the eternal word 
and the eternal word decreed from all time and before all time, the ultimate meeting of the yoke. The yoke we have here tonight has been engraved with the words, Eugem enum meum suave est, for my yoke is easy. That is because the yoke Christ has for you, to be yoked to him is the easiest there is of all the yokes in the world because he wants us all to get to heaven. There's an old story of a young man at the end of his rope. Seeing no way out, he dropped to his knees in prayer. Lord, I can't go on, he said. I have too heavy of a cross to bear. The Lord replied, My son, if you can't bear its weight, just place your cross inside this room. Then open that other door and pick out any cross you wish. The man was filled with relief and said, Thank you, Lord. And he did as he was told. Upon entering the other room, he saw many crosses. Some so large, the tops were not visible. Then he spotted a tiny cross leaning against a far wall. I'd like that one, Lord, he whispered. The Lord replied, My son, that is the cross I gave you in the first place. That is the cross you just brought in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Amen.